The importance of fresh vegetables as part of our normal diet has become a subject for much discussion recently, and I am delighted to announce the return of E.L. Wistie to comment on this subject in the person of Peter Cook. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a special welcome to all those of you who have been forced to eat spinach, the world's most ghastly vegetable. People were always trying to cram spinach down my throat when I was young. They kept saying, come on, E.L., eat up your spinach, it's good for you. Come along, eat up your spinach, E.L., or you'll never grow up to be big and strong and hairy like Auntie Stella. <laughs> my, uh, my Auntie Stella, she had the theory that everything really nasty must be good for you. Otherwise, God wouldn't have invented it. And so one day she had the wonderful idea that if she could find the nastiest thing in the world, it would do her more good than anything else. So she went round asking everybody what they thought was the nastiest thing in the world. And after a great deal of research, she come up with taking all your clothes off on a frosty night, lying down in the nettles and reading the book of Job. <laughs> Mind you, it, uh, it did do her a lot of good. After three nights of it, she died. <laughs> it's the best thing she's ever done. Even then, she got her own back, though. She asked to have her ashes scattered on the spinach bed. And as a result, it come up bigger and beastlier than ever. <laughs> the last time I was talking to you, I was telling you about the boring life I was having. I'd been looking at my diary, and I'd found how unbelievably boring my life was. Well, since then, I've realised that there are some people whose lives are even more boring than mine. I only come to think of this when I saw the Queen on television the other day. There she was, driving along at three and a half miles an hour in Berlin, <laughs> waving away at a load of old Germans. What a wretched way to spend the day, standing up in the world's largest car and smiling at thousands of total strangers. I hate to think what her dowry's like. Got up, brushed our teeth. Uh, she has to say that. Royalty have to say our, where we say my. It's a, <laughs> part of the traditions of the world. Got up, brushed our teeth, got into long car, waved, had lunch with some German people, brushed our teeth, got into long car, waved, had supper with some German people, brushed our teeth, had up. <laughs> It's even more boring than mine is. <laughs> I think she deserves a medal. Except, of course, she spends her whole time giving them out, so she'd be bored <laughs> stiff by that as well. I wonder what they talk about to her in that great open car of theirs. Goose and Albans, miney queenie. This is the... This is the longest car in the world. Oh, really? How very interesting. How much longer is it than the second longest? <laughs> and then she has to read those stupid speeches by Harold Wilson saying how much we in Britain care about the reunification of Germany. And by the way, could you let us have a few bob for the troops? <laughs> and then after all her work, after all that, they start insulting her. I heard on the news the other night that in Berlin they kept shouting out, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. They couldn't even be bothered to call her by her right name. She's not called Elizabeth, she's called Elizabeth. And in any case, it's very rude to call her by her Christian name at all. They should shout out Regina, Regina. <laughs> of course, it was mispronunciation, you know. It was, it was mispronunciation that led, that led to the last world war. When Chamberlain went to Munich or München to see Hitler, he made the mistake of going up to him and saying, Heil Hitler. <laughs> well, of course, this enraged the little twit. And uh, a few days later, he was dancing about all over Europe. So my advice is for the bloody old Germans to stop shouting out Elizabeth, unless they want the World Domination League after them. <laughs>